Good morning, church, and Merry Christmas. We hope you were able to tune into one of our candlelight services on the 24th. We were so sad to have missed being together in person, but trust God showed up in powerful ways in homes all across our city. If you are tuning in this morning for the first time, perhaps you checked out our Let It Glow drive through event or logged in on Christmas Eve, welcome. We look forward to finding ways to connect and hope you will reach out to us. You can even do that right now by clicking the Connect With Us button on your screen. If you are new to faith in Jesus or interested to learn more about Christianity, we have an awesome online class beginning January 18th. Christianity Explored is a seven session course that gives you the time, to, time and space to think about the big questions of life and to explore the life of the man Jesus at the heart of the Christian faith. You'll explore Mark's gospel to find out who Jesus is, why he came, and what it means to follow him. You can sign up for this class on our website. We also have a men's online Bible study coming up starting on January 9th, where they will be continuing to study an overview of the Old Testament. Sign up for this class is also on our website. We look forward to meeting again for a joint online service at 10.15 a.m. next Sunday to share communion together as we step into a new year. As you take time to reflect today on God's greatest gift to us in Jesus, please consider generously giving back to the Lord, thanking Him for His goodness and faithfulness each and every day. You can give online or stop by the church during regular office hours. We're looking forward to a meaningful morning together in worship and in prayer. Our service starts now. Well, good morning. My name is Shirley. I'm one of the directors here at Grant. I have Steve here with me this morning, along with some of our awesome worship team. And we want to thank you for connecting online with us today. It's so encouraging to know that believers and families all across our city are gathering today after a crazy, fun, exhausting couple of weeks with all of the changes and adjustments and perhaps some unmet expectations. But today, God is here to meet with us. He is never changing and he is worth taking our time to worship. So our plan this morning is gonna be a little different than a regular Sunday morning. We are gonna provide some time for prayer in your homes. And as families or alone, out loud or silently, whatever works best in your home, our team will lead you in songs of worship. Steve and I will read scripture and then direct you how to pray. And then we will all just quiet our hearts in prayer. Yes, so let's start out this morning by reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 3 to 14. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. 
And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Let's pray together. Holy God, thank you, Lord God. Thank you so incredibly much for the reality of your redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Thank you, God, for how you pour your grace out on us. Oh, God, thank you for making known to us the mystery of your will. We are your children. And so, God, today, would you just leverage these next few minutes together for your glory? God, would your name be praised? Would your, would your kingdom be advanced as we intercede together as a church family? So, Lord, we commit every aspect of this service into your hands, thanking you for your grace. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Amen. Yes, thank you, Lord. You are marvelous. You are beyond words. And we just thank you that you are the King of Kings. Praise to the King of Kings. So now we're going to spend some time continuing in this attitude of thankfulness and thanking the Lord for who he is and what he has done for him. So in your homes right now, you're just going to worship him with your own words, magnifying his name and his presence in our lives and declaring his goodness over us. I'm going to read Psalm 92, verse 1 and 2. It says, it is good to praise the Lord and to make music to your name, almost high, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. So right now in your home, it might feel a little bit crazy, but just thank him. Just open your mouth and just say, God, thank you. Lord, I worship you and I thank you that you are good to me, that you are faithful, that I can rely and trust on you, that you made a plan for me to be back in relationship with you through Jesus. And this morning, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Amen, hey? So it says, Psalm 19, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. And day after day, they pour forth speech. Just like we're doing right now. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. The law of the Lord is perfect. Refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy. Making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Thank you, Lord, that you give us light and show us the way. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. So may these words of my mouth this morning, my Jesus, and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So what we did right there is we just actually took a psalm and we just used it to pray. And so it's a great way for you in your home just to pick a psalm and rather than just reading it line by line, just pray it out and just put it into your own words. So right now, God, we just thank you for the beauty of creation, that the heavens declare your goodness and your faithfulness and your righteousness. Lord, we thank you that you are true and steadfast and perfect and all your ways are right. So Lord, in every home, would you be exalted and glorified in Jesus' name. As Gary plays just for a few more seconds, just take a couple more seconds in your home to just praise him and thank him for how faithful he is.
something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you. And now as we transition into a prayer of submission to God, I'd like to take a moment to pause and allow us to consider the aspects of our lives which we are hesitant to give up the control of. If you're anything like me, we like to believe that we have total control over our lives, over our money, our careers, control over our families and our health. And we hold on to these things with a death grip sometimes. And, and today, 
we're being invited to open up our grip on these things in an act of submission to God. And, and I know this can be very scary, but it's in this place that, that God will bring out the best in us as we open up our hands. God rarely takes those things and removes them out of our hands. He actually takes those things and uses them to glorify his name. And so my encouragement today is, what is it that you're holding on to? What, what aspect of your life do you refuse to let go of? You know, as, as we spend time in, in this Christmas season, we're so focused on the, the things that we, we get or we give, and we're so concerned about these experiences of being together as family. But, but here we are saying, Lord, take control of my life. Take control of these things and do with them as you wish. I, I love a passage in Romans chapter 12, and, and I really appreciate how Eugene Peterson paraphrases this. And I'd like to read the first few verses of Romans chapter 12. This is what Eugene, how Eugene Peterson paraphrases it. He says, So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for Him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what He wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Okay, friends, so for the next two minutes, let's spend time in silent prayer. I encourage you to just hold your hands out in front of you as a physical representation of an inner submission. Ask the Lord to bring to mind the, the things that you've been white-knuckling in your lives. And, and ask the Lord to give you the strength to place it before God as an offering. Oh God, would you just take this time right now, oh Lord, to expose to us our brokenness and to expose to ourselves the things that we've been holding on to. God, I pray that you would give us the strength to let go and to allow you to do something incredible with those things. So God, we submit to you, our families. We submit to you, Lord, our health. We, we submit to you, Lord, our finances. Guide us in how to manage those. God, we, we, we submit to you our careers. We submit to you our future plans. Here we are. Friends, take a few minutes to pray silently.
to Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give I will ever love and trust Him in His presence you for showing us areas that we need to surrender. And Lord, sometimes when you reveal those areas to us, it's like an instant uh, breakthrough or an instant idea of how to navigate a situation. But Lord, often the first place is just to recognize that that area of life and then to continually bring it to you and so we start this morning by bringing this thing to you and laying it at your feet and God trusting that as we say we surrender that you're going to help us to know what that looks like day to day because we do not want to be people who just sing things and say things. But we want to be people who walk in the power and the anointing of your Holy Spirit who is alive in us. And so I thank you that even now, God, you're at work in every situation, bringing light and life and direction and freedom. Because that's how good you are. So we just say we trust you. Amen. 
So now we want to take some time uh, in this part of our service to just lift up our needs to the Lord. He, of course, knows everything that we're facing, and yet he asks us to bring our request to him in faith, believing that he's working and moving in every single situation. So now as Hebrews 4 verse 16 says, Lord, we come boldly to your throne of grace. We need your mercy and we trust that here in your presence, we will find your grace to help us in our time of need. So Steve, why don't you lead us in bringing some of these requests to the Father? Yeah, for sure. Ha happy to. And, and I invite you um, to uh, submit prayer requests to the church. We, we pray regularly for, uh, for you. And, and so please do guide us in that. But I, I want to just start by praying and, and praying in faith that there are people who are watching, who are engaging in these, in these different scenarios and situations. And then after I pray, I, I invite you to spend time praying out loud in the room where you are, uh, with the people you are, or if you're alone, out loud in your room, and just pray for the things that are happening in your life that, that you're inviting God to work in, and you're inviting God to help you let go of as well. So let's just pray, oh God, we pray. Lord, that you would bring hope and peace into families who are experiencing disunity right now. God, we know that div divisiveness is just rampant throughout our culture. And God, I know that there are families navigating incredible division right now. God, I pray that you would show up in those moments and bring unity and hope. God, I know that there are people who are navigating just heightened levels of anxiety from a diagnosis or an upcoming doctor's appointment that they don't know what news they're about to receive. And so, God, we pray that you would enter into those situations and open our eyes to where you are at work and how you are carrying us. God, I know that there are um, the, the hearts of parents who their hearts are, are breaking as they watch their, their children make choices that, that inter are inviting harm into their lives. And so, God, I pray that you would surround those parents as they, they walk through that road. Would you give them uh, just a, a, a heart to, to pray and, and to intercede on behalf of their children? And God, I pray that your spirit would work in a mighty way in their kids' lives. Oh, God. We know, Lord, that there are people who are carrying significant weight when it comes to their mental health journey. And so, God, we pray that, that you would surround those individuals with your um, love and your peace, and, and that, that you would surround them with people who care deeply for them, and they'd be reminded of how you are present with them. Oh, God. We pray for those who are looking for work. God, we pray that you would provide for their needs, provide a, a job that is a source of joy for wherever they're at. Oh, God. Lord, we pray for those whose, um, who, whose fridges are empty and they're bar barely making ends meet. We pray, God, that you would provide for their needs in miraculous ways. God, I pray that you would carry them during this season and that you would raise us up like a church to know how to best support and encourage those. God, we pray for those whose homes are empty and, and whose hearts break by that fact. And we pray, God, that they, you would fill them with, with your, knowing that, that, that you have compassion on the brokenhearted. God, would you journey with them? Oh, God, we pray for those who are navigating broken relationships, that you would carry them. Oh, God. Lord, all of these situations aren't just situations. There's, there's people faces, names on the other ends of, of, of these situations. So God, I thank you that you know their innermost parts. You, you know their hearts. You know where they're at. And we know that you are present with them. You are present here in the room we are. You are present in the room where they are. And I pray, God, that you would carry them. And so Lord, right now, as the saints, as brothers and sisters in Christ across our city and across our world, begin to intercede for the needs that are happening in their lives. God, I pray that you would bless them in this. So now take some time in the room where you are and lift your request to God.
us by name Called us beloved Made us to live In the love that you give Called us daughters and sons Brought us into your family A place to belong
that's just a wonderful way to wrap up our time here. Lord Jesus, use us. We don't just want to stay here. We want to be used by you out there to see your kingdom advanced. Oh. Yeah, I, the moments like these are significant and important. But I also realize this is a process that we're on, right? Like we, we pray through these things. We, we open our hands. Yeah. But it's, it's a process that God has us on. And so I encourage you, as you go through life, as you lie awake at night, mulling over the, the stresses and the tension of your life, continue to just say, Lord, thank you for taking care of, and then add in whatever that prayer is for you. Lord, thank you for taking care of my kids. Thank you for taking care of uh, my future. Thank you for taking care of that doctor's appointment coming up. And we can celebrate that God is taking care of those things. I encourage you as you go into your day, into your week ahead, continue to thank the Lord for taking care of you. So next week, we will be back right here online at 10.15 a.m. for a combined single service. And then uh, on uh, January 9th, we will be back to 9 and 11 a.m., uh, a traditional service at 9 a.m. and a contemporary at 11 a.m. And those will both be held online. Okay, so January 2nd, online at 10.15. January 9th, online at 9 and 11. Um, over this up, the upcoming uh, days uh, throughout this next week, um, the office will be closed, but year-end donations can be given online or also dropped off in the drop box at the front of the church. Even though the office is closed, the drop box is going to be emptied regularly, and there will be somebody checking phone messages throughout the week as well. Well, we organize all of this, and we don't know how we're to close. What's what's our plan here, Shirley? Everything else is You're figured the out. Expert. You do it like every other <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> I love it. This is just so good yeah. to be able to do this together with you, and also the team here. Yeah. Massive thanks for leading us in worship and yeah. in this prayer time. I think I'm I'm struck by the passage that we started with out of Ephesians, mm. and there it says, "Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every." spiritual blessing in Christ. May you go in the confidence that you are in Christ, and because of that fact, you have been blessed in significant ways. Brothers and sisters, go in that peace and the grace of Christ. Amen. Thanks for connecting with us this morning. If you're new to our church, please reach out so we can connect, get to know you, and help you plug into our community. If you are new to faith in Jesus or are interested to learn more about Christianity, we have an awesome online class beginning January 18th. Christianity Explore is a seven session course that gives you the time, to, time and space to think about the big questions of life and to explore the life of the man Jesus at the heart of the Christian faith. You'll explore Mark's gospel to find out who Jesus is, why he came, and what it means to follow him. You can sign up for this class on our website. We also have a men's online Bible study coming up starting on January 9th where they will be continuing to study an overview of the Old Testament. Sign up for this class is also on our website. We look forward to meeting again for a joint online service at 10.15 a.m. next Sunday to share communion together as we step into a new year. As you take time to reflect today on God's greatest gift to us in Jesus, please consider generously giving back to the Lord, thanking Him for His goodness and faithfulness each and every day. You can give online or stop by the church during regular office hours. We're praying for an awesome new year ahead. We love you, church.